Cool. All right, guys. Welcome back to another East versus West. My name's Eddie. I'm Anthony. I'm fixing and, my camera. Hey. What was that? I was fixing my camera real quick. Oh, Put it down more. And, and today we're gonna have a a diverse conversation about a few different things. We're gonna start off with going over some good news that's out there and. Uh, right now, the the Orange County Orlando Task Force is working on phases to reopen the the parks and just reopen Florida in general. I believe California has something similar going on as well. Um, we'll transition from there to talking about the five things that we're looking forward to uh, once the parks do reopening to doing, and then finishing off with some news around. Uh, the Universal Park construction in Orlando, uh, specifically around Epic Universe and what came out recently, um, how the current scenario is impacting the the uh, actual construction. But uh, before we get into that, I'm going to transfer it over to my boy Anthony. Uh, he's got a couple things, though. You are on currently the Edutainment channel, so um, yeah, uh, we have merch. A merch website up and the Knights of Horror merch website is up right now and on that merch website we got East versus West merchandise uh, from t-shirts long sleeve tees sweatshirts tank tops girls t-shirts uh, stickers so if you guys have the uh, extra money and you guys want to support the show uh, go to the merch link and check out what we have on the store as well as other Knights of Horror merch from podcasts to um, just the logo t-shirt but of course, pick up that East versus West uh, merch. I know uh, me and Eddie just bought ours recently, uh, yeah. so gonna be rocking that pretty soon. Yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna <laughs> be good. Ooh, and then um, you know, follow us on our social medias and everything. Social medias, yes. I'm yep. a little out of it today. No, you're um, good. If, Nights if of Horror. Have, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe either. No, <laughs> Nights of Horror on Twitter and the Nights of Horror on Instagram. Um, and then on my YouTube channel, Night the Knights of Horror, subscribe, hit that bell notification as well for Edutainment. You know, go subscribe to Edutainment, follow him on your social media. What's your social media? Um, so I was looking at it after the conversation that you and I had. So it actually varies from like Twitter to uh, IG to Facebook, but um, I'm just gonna to keep it easy. The um, IG is uh, are, are you at are you Edutainment? <clears throat> nice. Yeah. Right. Uh, but if you search Edutainment in either of them, you should be able to find it. Should be able to find them. All right, kick it off with the uh, new safety guidelines they have in Orlando theme parks. Yes, sir. You got it pulled up? I do. All right, cool. So um, the the reason why we wanted to pull this up is because there's a lot of negative news out there about the current scenario, and I think this sh shines some positive light, shows that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Things are being put in place for the reopening. You know, it may not happen tomorrow. It may not happen in a month, but they're taking into consideration what's going on and how they could effectively reopen the park. So the overall um, idea here is to do it in the safest manner possible for the employees and ourselves. Um, so first and foremost, in the 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 particular guidelines that we're looking at right now are actually from the Orange County Orlando guidelines, but I believe also uh, California has something very similar as far as the guidelines. So uh, as far as like the theme park guidelines, they have things broken up into phase one and phase two. Um, I'm just going to skim over it. I'm not going to focus on any particular one just because you could actually go and pull this up. Um, you have uh, Blue Loop that has it on. You have the Orlando Sentinel. Um, these are different like websites where you can go and actually take a look at the spreadsheet that they were reviewing during the call. Um, but this was a live call that you could have like tuned in on while they were reviewing this, and this was like a, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, so they broke it up into different phases, and they also broke it up into small theme parks and large theme parks. Uh, small theme parks, that category kind of goes over like you know Top Golf, uh, Fun Spot. They have um, Gatorland parks that don't have the large capacity that. Um, a Disney World or Universal Park would. And then the large theme parks are those exactly. You got all of Disney World and Universal Parks um, fall under the large theme parks. Um, as far as the way that they break it down, you got guidelines and mandates. Gu guidelines being things that they want implemented um, either all the time or as frequently as possible. 
mandate being this needs to happen. So um, let's start off with the mandates for the large theme parks. The small theme parks are going to basically fall around the, the same kind of mandates um, to some degree. Um, and, and really what it, what it ends up being is the capacity and when these things roll out, that's going to be the difference. Um, but the mandates for the large theme parks, um, first and foremost, all employees must wear uh, a face mask. Um, also, touchless hand sanitizers at each ticketing entry and turnstile. In addition to touchless hand sanitizers at each ride, both entry and exit, temperature checks for staff prior to shift, temperatures above 100.4 must not enter the premises. All employees with flu-like symptoms advised to stay home um, and then wipe down of all rails and surfaces after every single use. Um, phase one, they're going to allow the theme parks to be at 50% capacity and then phase two, I believe it's 75 capacity. Phase three, I believe at that point, is going to be back to regular capacity, but still with all these mandates in place. Um, some guidelines, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I can't spoke today. Some <laughs> guidelines <laughs> are um, tapes on, on, or tape on the floor uh, marking the six foot uh, ride restriction for the queues, um, as well as staff to regularly wipe down surfaces at random, so as frequently as they possibly can. And then um, they're gonna also have an encouragement for staff members and visitors of 65 years or older to stay home for both phase one and two. Um, another thing that they, they went over, which is something that as soon as the theme parks, uh, Anthony, you got anything that you wanna add on there or anything that you, that you saw stuck out to you? It's pretty simple. I mean, pretty just the requirements of what's going on right now. Good to see that they have uh, in initiatives to go forward and uh, take the time and, and hopefully train their staff as to further detailing and cleaning, uh, you know, said rides and said gift shops, said restaurants. So um, yeah. that's just my biggest thing I'm hoping. I'm not reading that on here, but I'm also – but it is saying that, you know, they're, they're, they're preparing their employees for, of course uh, – the, the the said guidelines for uh, social distancing and and face masks and and hand sanitizer. I just I w I hope that when stuff does start opening up, they start releasing an overall guideline of how they're gonna maybe take like the for the, the you know a month before coming back, training all the staff into into cleaning and and stuff. You know, just uh, throughout the day. I mean, because I know that's gonna be a big thing, a big question that's gonna pop up to a lot of people. Yeah, and um, I, I think um. In the next like two weeks or something like that, I could be wrong, but very soon um, they're already allowing like restaurants and smaller businesses to already open. So like restaurants will they'll allow outdoor seating as long as the tables are six feet apart from from each other, um, as well as some social distancing measures and capacity uh, guidelines for interior. Of so for California, we actually have a four phase plan. The governor is trying to try out. Phase one would be opening up small businesses and, and small restaurants and stuff. Uh, I think phase two goes into the proportion of, of getting everybody kind of back to normal in a way. Phase three would be starting to open up like uh, more major businesses and getting everybody back into work. Uh, of course, following the social distance guidelines and following the face mask rules and, you know, washing your hands and, you know, all the, the necessities of bringing back you know, people into their normal routine lives. Then phase four would be, of course, opening everything as far as theme parks, getting everybody back to, you know, sports, sports games, you know, everything, you know, just everything as well. Um, however, if you do live in California, you do know, at least in the OC kind of area or, you know, in Huntington Beach to be exact, that yesterday there was a riot um, as of this recording, uh, a riot of people trying to get back into the beach. Um, because they had shut them down because of the new cases that popped up in OC uh, within the last week or two of uh, 19,000 new COVID cases. Um, I just want to touch on that a little bit. Guys, yeah. they're not doing this to – you know, the governor is not doing this to say, you know, fuck you. Uh, we don't want you guys in the thing, you know, in the beaches or anything. He's doing this to keep everyone safe. I can't stress this enough. The more we do our part in this, the faster this thing gets back to normal. Yeah. With with stuff like that, it's just going to cause it an extra month or so 
So I, I understand times are tough, and I understand people want to go to beaches. I understand people want to go to the theme parks. I understand people want to get back to their daily normal lives, and they want everything open again. But that doesn't happen unless we do our part in all this. So yeah. please, yeah. please just do your part and don't argue with what's, what's going on. Yes, it's bullshit, I know, because I'm going insane in, this, in my house as well. But please, please, please just be patient because stuff will go back to normal if we do our part. Yeah, and I, I, I was going to just uh, piggyback on that. You could attest as well as I can that it's not easy staying home, and we don't want to stay home either, but yeah. we understand the impact that this could have. And then another thing, um, I'm sure you probably saw SoCal put, put out a video that he went to the beach once they reopened the beaches, right? Did you, did you watch that? I did. Yeah, and he took the measures that were advised when going outside. He wore a mask. Yeah. Um, but one thing he did point out was that people weren't following social distancing and they weren't wearing masks either. So um, if if the measures are put in place or if they're allowing us certain um, luxuries again, like going to the beach, because right now that is kind of like a luxury. Going to events is a luxury that we don't have. Yeah. Uh, then we should take the proper measures to ensure that while we're doing this, we're still remaining as safe as possible and keeping everybody else as safe as possible around us. Definitely. But, yeah. Um, but that that's a good point. Thanks for bringing up your your phase or your your plan as well, because I, I heard about it. I heard it was the four phase, and you guys are being also a little bit more strict because I believe that the the phases don't yeah. even talk about theme parks up to like the third phase. Well, according to SoCal Exploring in San Diego, they're going to start opening their stuff in three weeks. A lot of the, the theme parks around there, which I really think is a bad idea, because the fact of the matter is, we saw how the beaches were. Uh, how people react to the beaches. And he's saying San Diego is a lot different than what it is over here. Um, but I always go back to the argument. Not everyone has been tested for COVID-19, myself included. So we don't know who has it and who doesn't. You know, someone can have it and not even know. And just not showing signs of symptoms yet. Or they just uh, have a really good immune system, but they still have the virus in them. So yeah. that's that's just what's scaring me about, you know opening up stuff like i get it we want to go back to the lives of just you know opening up stuff and everything but i mean look at just i mean just what happened in oc i mean forty thousand people showed up and nineteen thousand people got a covid case so it's like almost half of them got you know and so that right there kind of shows like if that's going to happen there with people getting that i mean the minute they open up these theme parks it's going to happen there probably and unless they you know have the right precautions t uh, taken and stuff what i think they really need to do uh, put into effect too and you know it's going to be a little bit more of us uh, you know adapting to this situation as well is start having people wear gloves as well yeah i mean i know it you know they kind of suck with of course when you're on your phone or something or when you just do everything everyday things and stuff but I think gloves need to be the next step in doing this as far as – because as far as touching and stuff goes, you know, I mean, you go to a grocery store, a million people – or not a million people, but, you know, hundreds of people a day will probably touch the same item you're going to pick up. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think that should just be the next step as far as, as, as where this goes. Gloves should definitely be in the, in the, in the works as well too. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm with you. I don't think that, that – it's a smart thing for any any large gathering to open up next week. And the phases that I've seen for you guys, although I haven't seen them all in great detail, um, it doesn't sound like that's actually accurate. So uh, it could be that different – California is a huge state, so different parts of California could be. Yeah. Like well, the, the thing is the governor's giving the freedom of the freaking cities to kind of work what they want. But as shown in OC, the governor – it's not looking good, man. I mean, I, I, I fear that we might have we might be going in martial law in California because of the people not following, you know, especially as a result of yesterday in Huntington Beach, the people, you know, I just that's what scares me the most is going into martial law. I mean, yes, I, I am just on the same boat. I want all these parks opened up and I want to do go out and do things again. But at the same time, if it's not ready, it's not ready. And if this is going to push us forward to martial law, that's a scary thing. People like really need to wake up and see that. Yeah. And. You know, let's hope that's that's not the case, and uh, yeah. that's what I'm hoping these phases uh, do. So back to back to like a, a positive thing, which that's what these phases are: uh, yeah. a, a move in the right direction. We're taking proper precautions, um, but another part of the the phases are also um, specific to.
hospitality and um, restaurants as well as hotels. Um, once you start traveling for the theme parks, a lot of people don't live exactly nearby. Some people are a few hours out, some people are in another state, so you may have to make a significant drive or a flight, which means that there's gonna be some guidelines and mandates for the hotels as well. Not sure that the hotels will be opening up at the same time as the parks, because um, I think if the hotels don't open up at the same time as the parks, that could also help with the managing the capacity, um, just because people aren't gonna come to the theme parks if the hotels aren't open, if they're too far away. Um, which is a smart thing. They they just don't open up the hotels, open up the theme park. Only really locals will start coming, which helps them um, manage the the guidelines and mandates and put, put certain things into place and test them out. But to go over kind of um, everything for the hotels, you got kind of all the same mandates as far as like uh, face masks for the employees, hand sanitizers at entry, all employees uh, that have flu symptoms um, need to stay home. Uh, front desks sanitize themselves on a regular basis. Consistent cleaning of guest areas. Front desk uh, utilizes sneeze guards. Another thing that I'm hearing that I don't see on here is the removal of front desk in general and also um, checking in. So everything will be mobile check-in. Um, so you, you check in on arrival without going to the front desk. You just kind of do it on the app and then you'll get a notification once you once you, uh, your room is ready and you just go up to your room, you're able to get in with your, with your app. So um, that's something that they're looking at implementing as well. Um, a, a couple things on here that um, are a little concerning for me because I am a, a Coke or not a Coke drinker, a coffee drinker is no coffee machines, uh, no, no mini bars and any of the like dispensing uh, machines there. So uh, that's kind of just like a, a brief overlook. Um, and that, that goes with, with both phase one and phase two. Um, it also, they, they have the, the guidelines, which once again, they aren't mandated, but as frequently as possible, they hope that these things are followed as well, um, which is very similar to what they have for the theme parks. Um, in addition to phase one and phase two, they strongly encourage that anybody above 65 stay home. Um, but the, the reason why I wanted to bring that up um, and, and Anthony as well wanted to bring this up is because we wanted to kind of shed some positive light on things that are being put in place. Um, you know, it's very easy for us to overlook everything because we're getting so antsy in our homes. Let's just make smart decisions. There's plans that are being worked on that if we wait and be patient um, can effectively make it so that this is a seamless transition back into normality. Yeah. I mean, and I always hate, I may, what I've been saying throughout this episode, I may sound negative, but I'm just telling you guys the truth, man. If we keep doing stupid stuff like what happened in Huntington beach and going to the beaches, it's only going to get worse. I'm just speaking the truth, man. I'm not trying to be negative because I am just up there with everyone else who is tired of being at home who wants to go out and do stuff, who wants to go hang out with their friends. Like, I am at that level. I am at the same level. But if we keep doing stupid shit like this, we're going to be in here a lot longer. And I'm, I'm thank, I'm, you know, it's, it is awesome to see these guidelines that are in, you know, putting in measure right now because this, this does bring hope for the parks may opening, may be opening sooner than rather than later because, you know, we've been hearing Disney might be not opening until 2021 and, you know, We've been hearing there might not be a haunt season and, you know, but this right here, it shows that they've already taken the measures and they're already testing out these, all these measures to, to get something going. They've, they've been planning this since they've the closure and they've been, you know, constantly seeing what works, what doesn't work. And they've been keeping an eye on the news as to what's going on in the world. So it's good that they do that. Another thing, I don't know if you touched up on a little bit, but restaurants, have we, have we talked about the restaurants yet? No, we didn't talk about them specifically. I, I, I like uh, that they're going to start. Uh, you know, including disposable menus and hand sanitizer at tables. Yeah. Um, I think that's good because, you know, I mean, with the menu, it's usually one plastic, uh, you know, just laminated menu, uh, and you don't know who uses that. Um, but uh, it's also going to be somewhat of a waste um, as far as paper goes. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if they start, uh, you know, like you said, with the whole hotel room thing, they can probably make that a mobile thing as well. You know, every time you go to the restaurant, 
yeah. they have like a specific thing that you log on to and you can check out the menu. Um, so that would be cool. But I think they're going to go disposable only because, you know, not a lot of people are very tech heavy when it comes to going to places like that. So, um, yeah. and that's cool. Implement a really strong like recycling program where they personally are recycling the paper and only utilizing recycled paper to make those those menus. Yeah, that would be really cool. I would I would really appreciate that as well. I mean, I don't know, man. It's just a strange world we're living in, you know? We never used to be like this, and now we're very much... You know, we're living in different times. I, I think what's going to happen is um, there, there are certain measures that are going to be put in place that are going to change the way we interact with restaurants, theme parks, and things of that nature, which are going to be much better. Like, yeah. all... You know, you go to a rest or a, a restaurant and or a hotel, and you're able to check in without going to a front desk. Yeah, uh, I know that kind of eliminates the front desk uh, necessity, but at the same time, we'll still need a front desk for other things, um, for assistance with our rooms and whatnot. But the simple fact that we're able to check into a hotel without having to go to the front, I, I think that would be something that it becomes a trend going forward that makes it a lot more convenient for us as as a guest. Yeah. Uh, the the um what's it called the the queues or the virtual queues that that's going to be extremely cool as well so you don't have to sit around in a boring line um that may have a delay or whatnot you you check in and you go um and yeah. then come back on your your appropriate time so i think a lot of positive things are going to come from this and all the negative things that do come from it will be temporary just temporary kind of nuisance that we have to deal with up till things are back to normal but a lot all the great things that that come from this and all the conveniences that are going to grow from this will remain and going forward will be better for it so that's kind of my my two pieces or my two cents let's uh transition from guidelines to because i want to end this podcast on a really good note so we'll we'll we'll, we'll bring in the bad news real quick um, as far as as far as what's going on in Orlando, which I'll let you okay. take over. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, you know what? I actually like that. We'll we'll talk about this and then finish it off with the top five things that we want to do once the that we can't wait to do until the when the parks reopen. So, yeah. Um, uh, an article came out and there was there was a uh, a news conference basically uh, going over the Universal Orlando's new park, Epic Universe. Um, Due to everything that's going on, Universal Studios and every single business in the world, uh, well, not every single business, but a lot of businesses in the world and theme parks are, are being affected greatly. Uh, I think Universal Studios for the first quarter of the year um, recorded like a 36% decrease in, in revenue. Um, and that's only going to be worse for the second quarter of the year because they've been completely closed as opposed to the first quarter they were open for a portion of it. Yeah. Um, so the second quarter of the year, that's going to impact them greatly. And they stand to, to lose around $500 million in profit for the second quarter. So that being said, the construction for Epic Universe has been paused, um, which sucks. This was, was uh, scheduled to open in 2023, and I was looking forward to it greatly. This is amazing that... Universal Studios continues to grow their 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 network of theme parks and is they're they're doing their best to to combat the the uh, Disney World and yeah. myself being a Universal fan I love Disney but I'm Universal at heart um, always knowing that Disney is so much larger is always kind of like a little like a little stab at me Universal's coming and, up man they're they're freaking gonna they're gonna be some competition pretty soon too. Exactly, and Epic Universe was uh, a sign that they were taking this really seriously. The, the first thing was coming out with the Harry Potter world and the Harry Potter lands, Diagon Alley and all that stuff, that, that made headway for them. Um, it made them a real player in the theme park world because um, people are coming from all over the world just to see that. Um, and now they were, they were going to take it a step further. They've been building a ton of hotels, but now they were going to open up a whole new theme park, which was huge with a bunch of different themed lands. Uh, but it's been halted now. Not to mention, uh, Mike Aiello dropped out of the uh, Horror Nights creative team just to join that team to try to bring it as well. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. Yeah. So maybe Mike Aiello comes back for the. 
He comes back for one more year, actually. Maybe. Who, who I knows? mean, I don't know how far they are in HHN 30, but I don't know how I don't know how much he can jump in right now. But we'll see. I mean, I know he I know he dropped the last, his last year of Hornets was last year, and that was due to him joining the creative team for Epic Universe, which I think is a a brilliant step in uh, next step in his career. Uh, being part of a team who gets to create a whole new park is awesome. Um, so you know he's got a. He, from what I've heard rumored so far, there's going to be a, a Universal Monsters kind of like land themed area. So yeah. you know he's got a lot of fucking, you know, talk into that as well. You know he's got a lot of ideas for that if that's true. And you know he's like one of the ma- main masterminds behind that portion of the park. <laughs> oh hell yeah! And um, yeah, just to kind of go over a couple of things. Um, this isn't necessarily the the point of us bringing this up, but a couple of the of the lands that are rumored to be coming are How to Train Your Dragon, uh, the Universal Classic Monsters, um, as well as uh, what was it? Um, uh, the the Harry Potter uh, the. The spinoff of Harry Potter. The oh, they're going to do something with Fantastic Beasts? Yeah, Fantastic Beast Land. Um, wow. So, that, so they're really covering all of the years of Harry Potter there now. Yep. And then uh, potentially also one of the lands being uh, Mario or uh, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. I wouldn't doubt it because everybody, yeah, all so. the other Universal companies are getting a somewhat adaptation of it. I mean, Hollywood's already working on it. Japan's is almost pretty much done, I believe. Yeah. And, and, and that being said, you know, there's a, a lot of reason to be excited for this coming. I, I think right now the the rumor is it's being pushed back a, ye- a year. Yeah, um, so, I was reading it right now. It said they said uh, they said it'd be, it'd be delayed for another year. So we're looking at 2024 now. Yeah, so 2024 now that that's good news. You know we we know that it's not completely being uh, scrapped. Um, if if you actually go to Orlando. Uh, you can actually see the area where Epic Universe is being built, and uh, up till just recently, construction was live and going on. So yeah. now it's been halted, um, and it's a it's a shame that it's been halted. But it, well, let's look at the positive in this though. It look it gives them an, it gives them kind of the opportunity to go and take more uh, another year and more time into designing more things and and adding more details to things than they have. So that's given them an extra year to be more a little bit more creative, which is really good. So, well, I, I think, that's a positive. Yeah, that's a positive, and I, I think another reason why they're doing this is because it also gives them the ability to now take in the the current scenario, implement things that if this were to occur again, that they part have a, already they have a fucking phase for they have a plan for it. Issue, you know. So instead of having like you know makeshift hand sanitizer stations, these are already built into this park. Yeah, so they have a plan uh, for it. Yeah, when you have the, the the virtual queues, they are perfected and already built into this part. Yeah. So um, I, I think that that's a, a positive is, you know, they could, they have more time for creative as well as they have more time to prepare this part to deal with the current scenario and not have to go down if it were to be presented. Because uh, my biggest thing going into this park was like, all right, they're building a new park. However, I don't know why I was thinking this, but I was already thinking it's going to probably be not a success in the beginning. I mean, but, I mean, I think when stuff starts getting more announced and what they're going to add into the park, I think it's going to drive audiences there. Universal Orlando already has a big, uh, you know, number of people that already come to the park. So I just hope this is a success because I'm looking, I'm just looking back at the past from like Disney, you know, when they opened up Disney Paris for the first time. It was a failure when they opened up California Adventure. It was a failure, you know. And I'm just looking back at like old parks, you know. Even at Disney World, there was a couple parks that were not successes in the beginning. So I'm hoping that this can break that kind of curse in a way where, yeah. when it opens, it's actually a success and it's financially financially profitable. Yeah, uh, Universal Studio itself, when it first opened up, like I, I think it was more than half the rides didn't even work. Yeah, so they were constantly going down. So, but um. Yeah. Speaking I mean, of rides, top five things, man. Okay, perfect. So um, that's it for the news on Epic uh, Universal's Epic Universe. Um, so we got a bit of an epic delay. An epic intended. delay. One <laughs> game on point. Uh, but, uh, you know, now transitioning into, you know, we know that things are being put, put in place. There's a couple of things that are getting delayed, but things are being put in place for us to get back into the park. Um, us as 
horror fans and theme park goers are excited for when those doors open. I know personally, I'm not as scared as a lot of people are. So as soon as those doors open, I'll be there. So we're going to transition into the five things we are looking forward to doing as soon as the theme parks reopen. And um, Anthony, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and take the, the lead on this. Right off the bat, number five, I, I want to ride Guardians of the Galaxy again. I fucking love Guardians of the Galaxy. It's one of my favorite rides at Disneyland, uh, California Adventure. Um, I would say go to Avengers Campus, but I think that's on delay right now. So I think they're pushing it back till next summer now, um, which is actually good because if that is the case, then maybe we'll just get a fucking – a full opening of the entire land rather than one part and then the next part. So that I'm actually okay with that. But, however, that will make it a little bit harder to get on both of the new rides because, of course, if they're going to use the same system that they use for Rise of the Resistance and um, to get into Star Wars land, which are boarding passes, um, it's going to make it a little difficult to get on the ride, but my ass will wake up early as hell in the morning so I can go experience some Marvel because I fucking love Marvel too with a passion so guardians of the galaxy is going to go at number five um just because i know marvel land ain't open yet so i want to ride guardians of the galaxy i want to get on i want to help rocket break out the guardians i want to hear some dope music while doing it and i just want to feel that sensation in my stomach i get every time i do that first drop which is just makes me laugh for some reason but uh and i want to see the collector's beautiful collection too because as a marvel fan i just geek out over all that stuff Nice. I need to see the the like uh, POV of this ride because it's beautiful. It is beautiful. It, think of you've been on Tower of Terror, right? Yeah. So that ride took over Tower of Terror over at California Adventure, and it's basically the same concept except there's just new um, new uh, effects and everything on the ride, and they redesigned it to look like uh, the collector who who's played by Benicio del Toro in Guardians of the Galaxy. They turned it into like his his kind of headquarters and his like office and everything. So nice. What what characters from the movie do you see there? You see all of them. It's actually um, as James Gunn was filming Guardians Two, Disney approached him to film a uh, a thing for the ride. So all the actors from the Guardians of the Galaxy movie are actually on the ride. Nice. Yeah. So it's awesome. I'm gonna definitely have to check that out when I'm making I it now. the first MCU ride at any Disney park. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah, first of many because first the of MCU many. Yeah, doing amazing. I'm excited for MC. Out. Anything Marvel, dude, bring it to the parks. I will be there day one. I was there for day one at Star Wars, and I'll be there for day one at Marvel, dude. Perfect. I'm bringing my Infinity Gauntlets, too. <laughs> Got your new Marvel mask, too, man. Dude, I'm bringing my bringing the Marvel <laughs> freaking social distancing mask. I'm bringing the go. gauntlets. Yeah. I'm going all Marveled out, dude. Sure. I'll paint myself purple if I have to. You're ready to, to ride Guardians of the Galaxy in style. In style, dude, with and gauntlets safe. and a freaking face mask. Yeah, done by Eddie Tim and himself. Yep, same look, 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 look at that face mask. It's beautiful. He designed that. He made that. He sewed that himself. Hell yeah. <laughs> I, and then I, you know we got other ones like like these guys. The the thing there you go. for your, all your universal needs right there. Yep. Um, but we're we're gonna transition to myself. My number five is a little bit more simple than uh than anthony's and the reason why is because i actually don't live in the state where the theme parks are so um as, as soon as the theme parks open up what i'm looking forward to is going to visit universal and what the first step to going to visit universal is is booking my on-site hotel oh, um nice. yeah that that process and receiving your email um that you're you've been booked is always so rewarding for me um, for the past few years when I've gone to, to Halloween Horror Nights or Universal Studios just in general, I've stayed on site. Um, the last time that I was there, I stayed at the Aventura, but I'm probably, for the speed pass reason, um, maybe I don't even need a speed pass given that when they reopen it may be a little bit slower, but I'll probably yeah. be staying at one of the premium hotels um, like the Hard Rock Hotel. So uh, looking forward to booking that, that hotel stay. Definitely. Number four for me is probably just going to be taking a trip down to Universal Studios Hollywood itself. I have not been since Halloween Horror Nights. I have a pass, um, and I have not just taken a day trip down to Universal in a while, and I would love to see uh, – for, for starters, I would love to ride the studio tour. I love the studio tour. I can ride that thing all day if, if I could. Um, you know, checking out the Simpsons ride, watching Waterworld. I love Waterworld. Uh, getting on The Mummy, getting on Jurassic World, getting on Transformers. Got to save mankind. So, just taking a universal trip, man, because I have not been in a cool minute. Yep. 
My number four, once again, is a little bit simple. I'll, I'll get into a, a little bit more specific things in the park yep. in a second. But my number four is riding the water taxi from the hotel to City Walk, where you enter the the theme nice. park. Nice. Um, I'm not sure. I don't. Does Does uh, Hollywood have water taxis? No, it's just a parking lot, City Walk, and then the theme park. Okay, cool. Haven't been there, but once you come to to Orlando, that's one thing you'll really like. And it's extremely convenient after walking all day is riding the water taxi back to your hotel as well as into the theme parks. Um, but that, that's always um, the, the first ride on that water taxi on your way to City Walk to enter the theme park is always the most exciting ride. So riding that, that water taxi from the Hard Rock Hotel with one. Well, the Hard Rock Hotel is really close to the theme park. So sometimes it makes more sense to walk. But I think this time around, just for the sake of riding the water taxi because I miss it so much. I'll go ahead and ride the water taxi. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Sounds like fun. I am at, to my understanding too. I think Disney world does the same thing with their ferry, right? They have like from the parking lot to the park. Yeah. The parks. Disney, Disney has a huge ferry and I believe, um, also some of the, um, hotels will also do a boat ride to the magic kingdom. I must say right now you look like Fred from freaking, Scooby Doo with the looking like a the masks cook uh, be your ascot. You got the hair going. <laughs> you got the Scooby Doo. Where's the mystery? Where's the mystery incorporated at, man? That's that's a compliment because he's technically like the handsome leader, right? So thanks. I'm, I'm fine with being shaggy, honestly. I don't care. <laughs> Just need to find me a Scooby Doo, man. I need to find me a loyal companion who wants to eat all the time. Sam. Sam. Nah. <laughs> that's mean. You just called Sam a dog. No, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I love Sam. Um, number three for me, Rise of Resistance, man. I want to ride that again. Me and Sammy, before this thing uh, broke out, we made a pact that we were going to ride Rise of Resistance ten times on the opening year. I'm at five currently. He's at four. So uh, we're a little – we're halfway there. And this is kind of putting like a little stop to that right now. So when I'm hoping the theme park's open soon so we can finish – our goal to 10 because I really want to do 10 ride throughs of rise of resistance opening year. So that's my goal. Nice. And coincidentally enough, my number three is a little bit different than yours, but still very similar because I haven't been. So actually going and visiting the star Wars area, the, uh, no, Man not, too. It, yeah. Man too. Galaxy's edge. Galaxy's edge. There we go. That's what it was escaping me. And I want to ride that freaking ride because I, when you rode the ride, when I was watching you ride the ride, was that your first time? <sighs> no, that was my second time because the first time I live streamed it, I only did the line queue. And then gotcha. the second time, which was the next day, I went back and I live streamed the entire ride because I have already experienced it. So it was like, all right, now I'll live stream it for everyone. Dude, when you live stream that ride, I was so excited. I don't know if you noticed. But I did like a huge blast and got you like 10 more viewers just because <laughs> I was like, what the hell? And all my friends like started like tuning in and they, they were like texting me and being like, holy shoot, who is this guy? You know, okay. like, what ride is this? And I was like telling them, I was like, that ride, watching it from a live stream was mind blowing. So I could only imagine. That does nearly no justice as to what I, the ride does in person. I could tell. I could tell already that the, the, the ride, even though I've seen it, will still blow my mind. Dude. So that's why my number three is visiting Galaxy's Edge and uh, – I'll cheat a little bit – and riding Ride of the Resistance. You got to do the Millennium Falcon too. That's also another must-do. That's a fun one. Smuggler's Run, great ride. It's like a game ride, right? Like you yeah, like it's, it's, like a, it's like a pretty much – yeah, you get to – it's like an interactive ride, but it's really fun. Just to be in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, it's been a dream of mine since I was a kid, man, and they brought that to life. Same thing with Rise of Resistance. They immerse you. It's not even a ride. It's an experience. Yeah. You feel like you're in a freaking uh, Star Destroyer. You feel like you're part of the action. You feel like you're being shot at. You feel like you're freaking getting chased. And it's like you feel like you're flying in space. Like it is amazing what they did with that ride. So cool. I can't wait. So what are we on? Number two now? Yes. Number two. This is going to be a two-parter because it's technically a food and it's also a drink. Um, I want a churro and I want a pineapple Dole Whip from Disneyland. Nice. Those are the two best foods 
that you can get at Disneyland. The Dole Whips themselves are just so delicious. The mixture of pineapple juice with, with pineapple ice Dole ice cream, so bomb. And then a nice hot churro to that on top of that. The words can't describe how watery my mouth is right now because I really want one. So Dole Whip float, churro number two. And, and I, I know that the treats at Disney are great, but I've actually never had a Dole Whip. Yeah, if they have them in Orlando, you have to try it. Yeah, they, they have them in Orlando. I've seen yeah, that is a must time. try. Like I it is. <clears throat> uh, you can. I would do both. Try the ice cream and then try it with the the pineapple juice. It is just it's delicious either way. Awesome. I'll check it out next time when I'm there when, yeah. while I'm visiting Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, yeah, and get the blue milk too. All right, and then my number two uh, for me is riding Hagrid's. Um, Hagrid's. Yeah, I, I I was there for opening weekend of Hagrid's uh, cheesy or cheap plug. Uh, it's in my channel. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> yeah, um, I have the video on my channel. But that ride was amazing. I didn't get a chance to ride it in the night just because it, the the opening weekend and opening month. I'm sure everybody knows that thing was down so many times. Yeah. It was open late, close early. Open late, close early. Um, so I, I was glad that I was able to ride it once, but I, I hear the experience and uh, Losh um, from or Adrian from Losh TV let me know that the nighttime experience is completely different from a daytime experience in that roller coaster. It is an outdoor roller coaster, but incorporate incorporates scenes. Um, so you'll, you'll be able to experience it in a whole different way when you ride it in the nighttime. It's also a lot cooler in Florida in the nighttime yeah. than it's in the daytime. And freaking heat. Kills you over there, no matter what freaking, but when I, no matter what freaking uh, season it is, I take it's always like five hot showers every time I go. I take like five showers every day. It's like well, I don't blame you, dude. You probably feel all sticky and yeah, it's yeah you sick. feel gross. Like, I don't blame you one shower. bit. Breakfast shower. Yep. Lunch shower. <laughs> yep. Go to the park shower. Take a shower before you take a shower. It's like yeah, come on, right? pre shower. <laughs> yep. Um. The last one for me, and this, I, I would hope this was number one for both of us, but I could be very wrong. Um, being that they are part of theme parks, haunt season. I just want to do haunt season. Yep. So I, I want to go back to Knott's. I want to go back to Halloween Horror Nights. I want to do Hayride. I want to go to Six Flags for, for the first time this year. I want to go to Castle Dark. I want to go to freaking Queen Mary. Like, I want to do them all. And I want to see my friends. I want to support my friends. And I just want to see the community out there having a good time. I just want to see it all. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I had a feeling that you and I would have a similar number one as well. I was surprised that we had a similar number three. Um, yeah. But my number one is to book with confidence my Universal Halloween Horror Nights trip. Yep. If I were to book it right now, I'd be worried whether or not it's, it, it's going to happen 100%. But if the parks have opened and I book it, I could book with confidence my trip to Halloween Horror Nights for opening weekend. I, If I were you, I'd probably book soon, though, because if that does end up happening, that the park's open, people are going to book like crazy. I know, but you, you know what my, what my issue is? Um, I'm an annual pass holder, and last year, I actually got the best deal possible a month before the event, and I had already booked it, but... Universal uh, annual pass holders. There's a uh, pass holder appreciation month. Yeah, and it's it's the midway through August, halfway through September. So you could actually get a really steal of a deal on a on a hotel if you wait for that time. Wow. Um, and I had already booked, so I could technically book and then cancel it and and rebook with that deal, but. If, if that ends up being the same thing, that's the reason why I'm kind of like waiting. But I probably will end up booking as soon as either by June because June is my birthday and I, I like to buy myself a, a present. That might be it. Yeah. Oh, or as soon as they had announced that it's their, their opening, um, I could do it confidently. Definitely. So that's our five things we want to do when the park's open, man. Yeah. And, and I, I think we should have opened up with this. Because uh, on their last podcast, they actually opened up with it. We got to give uh, uh, Horror Nights Unscripted uh, a, a shout out. Nah, uh, we close. We close with it. We end on positive. Hey, we yeah. start rough, but we end smooth. <laughs> That's how we do it. Yeah, on we here. 
We yeah, do our awesome. own way. We don't want to copy. We don't want to be no copycats. There's already a couple copycats out there who stole <laughs> some show ideas that I don't want to get into. A lot of legal things. A lot of lawyers don't involved. Worry. Don't want to get into yeah, any of it. We're letting our lawyers handle it. <laughs> letting our lawyers handle it. We put merchandise out. They followed us and put merchandise out. You know, it's a it's a whole big thing. Yeah, and hey, funny enough, this is the the most hilarious part. I just thought about this right now. SoCal's part Mexican, right? I don't know what he is. I think he said it on, on like a recent video. And you're part Mexican, right? Uh, yeah, well, Spanish, but yeah, Mexican, yeah. Are, are you Mex- part Mexican or not Mexican? Part like Mexican. Spaniard. I mean, my my Mexican goes from like Spain, so. So you got like lineage from Spain to Mexico into the U.S.? Is yeah, because uh, yeah, like my grandpa, his, his, his dad were like from Mexico, so. Gotcha, gotcha. And I think he said that he was part Mexican too, and then Losh is Cuban and I'm Cuban. So like this is like copyright infringement to the bone. To the bone. Dude, what's going on here, man? <laughs> no, we we're we're kidding. We love those guys. They gave us a shout out on their last video. So yeah. I wanted to take a moment Go to check out Hornets and Scripted. They got actually a really good episode that he's either already out or is gonna come out with um the founder and starter. Of part of the creative team for uh, Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando, so that's really oh, cool. Oh yeah, I can't wait to watch that one. I'm actually really. That's gonna interested. be a good episode. So check yeah. that out. Um, they submitted question. Uh, I think it was on Instagram. They submitted where you could submit a question. So if yeah. it hasn't been yet, and you want to submit a question, you could do that as well. I submitted yeah. mine. Hopefully, they actually they actually uh, take my question and ask her because um, I'm gonna be watching. And if they don't, oh. If oh. they don't, though, what was the question? <laughs> uh, so the the question I submitted is. Um, for her, when she is experiencing the event as a fan, how does she like to experience the event? And what I mean by that is how does she tackle the houses? How does she tackle the scare zones? Because you and I both know that when we go several nights, we usually tackle the scare zones a certain way. We have our plan of attack. You know, we speed pass, things of that nature. Kind of just from the creative mentality, now going into a fan mentality, how how does she tackle the event? Definitely. All right. You heard it here, man. If that question doesn't get answered, I'll drive down to San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and social distancing, distancing ass whoop. <laughs> yep. Just kidding. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, whoop. thank you for watching East versus West. Uh, so your, your dose of both coasts. Um, it was good to talk about theme parks. See, we are keeping our promise. We're talking about other things than haunts. So there you go. Perfect. We kept our promise. Yes, so, we did. If you guys liked this new kind of style of talking about other things besides haunt, which is our specialty, but we are open to talking other things as well, uh, let us know down in the comments what do you guys want to hear as far as theme parks, or if you guys want to, you know, us to talk about, you know, that's something that's different on the West Coast, East Coast movies. I mean, who knows? Anything, everything, we can have a debate about for East versus West. We will do. Um, be sure to subscribe to both channels, follow all of our social medias, and of course, don't forget to get that merch. It's just the links in the bio right there. So go check out that merch uh, shop for that new East versus West merchandise. Um, I know me and Eddie are getting ours pretty soon, which I just ordered yours yesterday. So Teespring has been. I will say this though, when you guys order, Teespring has been a little bit um, behind as far as shirts goes. You know, with, you know, with the whole thing with COVID and everything. So just bear with them. They do print great, great quality stuff, and I, I, I have my full faith in them. So if it's a shirt or anything like that, just be a little bit patient. It took me a month just to get uh, one of, a shirt that I ordered from um, the Torment Society. So you know, just be patient. They do deliver, um, but stickers and stuff I have been shipping out really fast. So awesome. Um, we will see you guys next time for another episode of East vs. West.